In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a watercolor character illustration completely from scratch. Follow along with my Mrs. Mouse and then create somebody of your own. What's up friends? Welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel we make art together and it's fun not scary. And today we're creating a watercolor character and, and just grab a cup of tea and sit back and enjoy because I'm walking you through the whole process. For supplies you need a pencil, fine liner, tracing paper, scrap paper or a sketchbook and then of course you'll want your watercolor paper or sketch pad, uh, some brushes, a couple round brushes and and your watercolor paints. To begin though, just grab that sketchbook and pen or pencil and we're going to talk about creating a character. So first I want to draw a little bear. So I'm drawing his snout. It's basic, you know, an oval with the nose, uh, maybe a little highlight on his nose. He's got two very simple eyes. You can actually see his little face there. Then if I go around, I give him the shape of his head, maybe a little fur and two ears. There's a basic bear. It was that simple, but now I want to think about how can I change it? What if I want a more, I don't know, a, a bit of a chunkier bear? Maybe I make that initial nose or snout shape larger. I, I make the eyes smaller and more wide set. The whole head becomes a little wider. Or maybe he's not such a thick and juicy cutie. Maybe I'm going to make everything a little bit smaller. Give him some eyebrows. I don't know, make those ears a little more wide set. You see how changing things just ever so slightly, even within a very simple design, gives you the ability to decide exactly what type of character you're creating. Next, I wanna illustrate a mouse together. And Miss Mouse is not going to be looking straight at us like Mr. Bear. She's going to be on a three quarter turn. So I start in pencil and I place the line where the center of her face sits, but I place it off to the right. Then that allows me to show her on more of an angle. There's her big ears. We'll go over it in pen so you can really see. She's got two big ears. She's sort of turned on his three quarter angle looking away and she's still got a very simple snout just like Mr. Bear and I'll put her whiskers. And I'm sure right away you can start to imagine, okay, well, what if we make her ears smaller or her snout larger or her nose bigger or the whiskers could be quite short Short, all those little decisions informs what type of character you're creating. Are they happy looking? Are they grumpy? Are they young? Are they old? All of those things are the choices that you as the artist get to make. And instead of being scared of them, I want to encourage you to be kind of excited by those choices because when you are, as the illustrator are in the driver's seat, you actually don't have to worry about how good the illustration is. You just have to worry about how interesting. So we've all seen a mouse drawn perfectly. Perfectly. Your mouse needs to be your style or your bear. So think about creating something that's uniquely yours instead of creating something that's perfect. And here, what I wanted to show with this entire sketchbook practice page was simply that we can start with these faces, think about how the character is facing the audience, think about their age, their their disposition. And then once we've got that head and face down, we can add a really, really simple body. And that's how we're going to uh, create a character today. So let's flip over, flip ahead in my sketchbook. And I really love the way Miss Mouse looks. So that's what I'll be working with. And we're going to kind of start from scratch and walk through it really slowly. Okay, beginning in pencil, I am going to sketch out the size and shape general shape of Miss Mouse's head. And then I'm giving myself that grid. So that makes it easy for me to draw the three quarter turn. So she's on a half angle there. And then I put her little snout, two very simple eyes. And then the bottom of that snout is kind of going to be her mouth. Ears are typically in line with the eyes. Well, that's for people, <laughs> but I think for the mouse, it kind of works to the bottom of the ear anyway. And then her body, I'm just doing like a big round circle. So Miss Mouse doesn't have to have a very detailed body. I'll sketch out two little simple arms. The hand is nothing more than a half circle. I'm starting to shape a bit of a dress there. 
And then uh, the feet very much like the arms and, and the legs too are, are just very basic sketching. The feet are just circles. So take it from me, keeping it simple is helpful and it doesn't mean it's going to look bad. That's the fun of illustrating is that you don't have to get every last detail. We're not going for realism here. We're going for cute. We're going for interesting. So having a little foot that's no more than an oval or circle is like kind of perfect. I am going over everything in pen. This is the first step in me refining my initial sketch. So in pencil, I kind of figure out where I want everything to be. But then when I start going over it in pen, I make decisions like, okay, those arms need to be a bit lower, a bit longer. Uh, this foot is going to be kind of kicked up in the air. Oh, hey, I forgot a tail, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then once I've gone over it in pen, we're nowhere near done but we have done the hardest part. Now we get to have the fun of continuing to refine and we refine our illustration by tracing it. So grab a couple sheets of tracing paper and working in pen, we're going to trace, trace, trace. What I love about tracing is that you can keep what you like about your illustration and you can change the things that you don't like. So tracing is not cheating. You are tracing your own work. It's just like if you were writing, this is your editing phase and it allows you to make all these wonderful little changes while maintaining the things that you love about your first sketch. So you can see, I'm trying to figure out where exactly the eyes need to sit. I made her a little wider. I made the tail slightly longer. Uh, now that I've taken that first trace off of the sketch, I can really see what I'm working with, see how I changed it, and I'm gonna do the whole process over again. I'm going to trace my trace and change what I don't like and keep what I do like. So there's lots of things about this trace that I do like. And you can see I'm able to just put the eyes exactly where I planned. And now we can really see what we're working with here. I'm gonna add the frill, add the nose. I think she got a little bit too uh, wide there. The dress is just out too far. So I'm changing little things. And um, I will do one final trace. You may not need to do this many. You might have it after one trace and you might just say hey I'm really happy with that this is perfect and I'm good to go and that's totally fine you don't need to do three or four traces like I've done here if you get it after one great uh, the, tracing is also a good time to add things like I added a little Peter Pan collar there okay I think Miss Mouse is just about done and we're ready to now transfer her to our watercolor paper in order to transfer, simply flip over your design, put a bunch of graphite on the back, and then we will set that aside. We're going to now get our watercolor sketchbook out. This is my 50 ways to fill a sketchbook sketchbook. If you aren't aware, I'm doing a series. It's just lots of different ideas for when you don't know what to paint in your sketchbook. We did lavender. Uh, some of these are from Patreon. We did blob cats and a lilac sketch. And uh, oh, recently for my birthday, I did 25 watercolor floral doodles. It's a great video. If you haven't watched it, definitely check that that out. Abstracted Roses is another one from this summer that I'm really proud of. So go watch all these tutorials if you're interested. For now, working on a fresh clean page, we're going to just tape our design in place. You get to decide where you place your character on the page as well. And I'm placing Miss Mouse quite low. Trace over the entire design with a nice sharp pencil. And there you can see it's um, been transferred beautifully. And we've just got a nice light pencil design that we can erase if we need to, and we can go over it with watercolor. And of course you can add any missing details with your pencil. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. But for the most part, I think I'm about ready to start painting. So that's kind of crazy guys, like just in the space of time that it took to have a nice cup of tea, we've created a character. We've basically birthed a mouse. That's weird. <laughs> but we've come up with something really imaginative and fun. And whether you're following along or you created a bear or a cat or whatever type of animal on your own, you really did that and created something totally just out of 
thin air. So that's pretty cool, I think. Grab some uh, clean water, couple glasses, your watercolor paints, and a small round brush. I'm using a number six because the mouse is quite small. And then we're going to mix up our colors. Because I'm doing a little mouse, I'm using colors like red brown, Van Dyke brown. Um, I'm also going to grab some French gray so that I can kind of work with a bit of a grayish brown. Um, you could of course make your mouse gray. I'm, I'm gonna work mostly with brown tones. I'm gonna mix a little white in there as well, maybe a little raw sienna. And I basically just wanna have a couple different shades of brown to choose from. So I'm mixing more raw sienna and white on the top. Um, and then I've got the Van Dyke browns and grays on that lower part of the palette and I'll just be able to pull from different shades of brown as I'm painting. For her dress I'm using indigo and cobalt blue and uh, just mixing up a couple different blends of both of those colors. I'll also put a little gray on the palette here because anywhere I need to add shadow I'm going to use gray. And then finally for her tail and her ears I need a light pink so I'm mixing Jaune Brilliant with cold pink and a little bit of white. Okay, this has all been fun, but now this project gets really fun because basically we've created like a coloring book page or image and all we have to do is color it in with watercolor paints. So again, I'm using that tiny or not tiny, but small number six round brush and I am using a very light brown here. This is red brown and raw sienna with maybe a little white and I am just filling in her bottom and her legs and feet. And I did release a little bit of a slightly darker brown um, sort of on her left and right side. So just maybe she's a little bit lighter right in her front. <laughs> um, but that's why it's nice to have a couple different colors of brown there. And then I'm also making the bottom of her foot quite light. So just making those little decisions. I'm grabbing a slightly darker brown and I'm going to fill in her hands, which are basically just mitten shaped. <laughs> Not too detailed and that's okay. And then I am going to clean my brush, pick up that pink and just fill in the middle section of both ears. So adding the pink and then I can grab a slightly darker, more concentrated pink and release it right in the center. Then I'll take a lighter brown and paint her little snout so the snout is a little lighter. And then finally, before the pink of the ears and the light brown of the snout has dried, I want to take my nice red brown and we're just going to finish painting her entire head. And that way we'll get a nice blend with the snout. There won't be a harsh line but the snout will be lighter. I'm being careful not to touch the brown to the pink too soon so that I don't just get this big, crazy, messy blend of brown and pink, but I still want a softness there. So I want the pink to be ever so slightly wet when the brown um, touches up against it. Once that's done, I'll rinse my brush again, pick up some more pink, and we're just going to paint that tail in one smooth motion, maybe adding a little bit more paint so that the pink is darker at the bottom where the tail meets her body. And then I'm going to start on her dress and I want to do gingham. I feel like gingham is so in right now, so I am challenging myself. I'm still using the same brush and I've got nice indigo there and I'm just painting very perfectly imperfect stripes and the stripes kind of show the shape of her body a little bit so they go out they sort of fan out over her tummy and I'm kind of making this up as I go along but I painted all the vertical stripes first and then I'm painting in the horizontal ones. Make sure to move the, the uh, paper if you are more comfortable. And I am just really can't emphasize enough that it's very perfectly imperfect. Because this is a pattern on fabric and the fabric is moving and flowing over the shape of her body, I want it to look very free form. And uh, so I'm just kind of playing around and honestly it looks fine. <laughs> and then I thought, you know, a full gingham dress might be a little bit much that's a lot of pattern so why don't I make it more of a pinafore style and I kind of 
it painted in the top of the apron there and then I'm filling in again with the stripes and I kind of must it up a little. If there's areas where it all just kind of blends together, that's totally fine, that's gonna look good. From there, we just need to paint her shirt, and I thought a white blouse actually looked quite stylish for Miss Mouse. So using just a little hint of French gray, I'm painting shadow, and that's to show that the white fabric, you know, is not just flat, it's uh, wrinkled, and she has a bit of shadow at the bottom of her arms. Maybe the sun is overhead, so there's a little bit of shadow on her lower arms. We'll add a little bit of gray on the ruffles of her dress, and there's also some shadow on her collar where the fur meets the collar. That fur casts a bit of a shadow, so that looks much more lively. Now I want to grab a little bit of black, just a simple straight black paint, and on the very tip of my brush I'm going to carefully paint in her little nose. Start small with these details, you can always make them bigger, and I'm painting two tiny little black eyes. So start small, don't make them too big or it can look scary, you know. Uh, we'll use that black to add her tiny little whiskers, very, very thin lines, very delicate. And then I decided I maybe would do just a little hint of black outline on some of the details of the blouse and skirt ruffle. Cool, so good job, my friends. At this point, I'm sure you can see that we've entirely colored in our character. And now we wanna start building shadow and texture. So we did do some shadow on the white because we didn't have to paint white. We're going to continue the process of shadow and texture. And for me, I'm beginning with that mix of red brown and Van Dyke brown. So taking a darker brown and kind of adding some shadow and shading where uh, I think I can use it on the fur and I do that by in some spots just adding some darker brown maybe right under the ruffle of the skirt or at the base of the foot and I also do that by putting some little thin lines to show hair and fur. So I'm doing double duty sort of here. I'm adding some darker color that is shadow and shading, but it's also giving the look of her little furry body at the same time. Um, so just using wispy little brush strokes and in some areas, um, the brush strokes aren't so wispy and it's just a larger swath of color and that's just up to you. Like at the base of the snout, I'm just gonna do one sort of long brush stroke there to show that the snout, you know, is three dimensional. And in other areas, like at the base of the uh, leg, I'm doing little tiny brush strokes to show that yes, there's shadow, but it's also wispy and furry. We'll add a darker pink along her tail and give her a little bit of a footprint. So we're adding all these little details. And then I'm going to wash my brush and pick up a little of that French gray and I want to just add a little bit of gray on her pinafore, uh, kind of in the areas like the sides of her tummy where the light might not hit or like under her arm and hand um, showing that, you know, the arm is casting a little bit of shadow there. And that's it. Miss Mouse is pretty much done. So now I want to add a little bit of grass and you can certainly add any details to this painting that you want to add whether she's holding something or there's sky or a sun or whatever I am just putting in a tiny bit of grass I'm using clean water on my brush here to blend that grass out to kind of make it look like the illustration is sort of fading back into the page that's just a nice way to add like a little bit of detail like grass um, without feeling like you miss something you know she's got a nice big area of negative space around her that's kind of centering her and now we just need to let that dry completely we are so close to being done and I can't wait to finish this up with you so when you are totally sure that your watercolor painting is dry you can use an eraser get rid of any pencil marks clean that off completely she's looking cute we're sure that it's dry uh, so now we can do the final step which is to just take that French gray and add a bit of a shadow right under her that's really going to bring this to life and make her look very three-dimensional and just finish the illustration off it really requires that shadow shadow can pretty much be any shape also it could be long 
long as if uh, she's out in the evening or late afternoon or it could be short like mine maybe it's high noon so that's up to you any last details that you want to add go ahead but we are all Done. We created a cute character out of nothing but our own imagination and illustrative skills. Thanks for following along and if you want more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.